Welcome into the 402 from the 402 podcast. I'm Anna Bellinghausen. Today, we're bringing on a very special guest, Kay Johnson, Bellevue West alum, went to SDSU and now a member of the Seattle Seahawks. Kay, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on. <clears throat> so your second year in the NFL, second training camp, take me through what's the day-to-day -day like right now, Cade, up in Seattle? Uh, I mean, my days are kind of like a little bit stressful. Uh, I wake up like every day at like 637. And it's, it's definitely different because like I'm out here, uh, like Pacific Standard Time, I think is what they call it. Um, so like... <laughs> Central Standard Time is like uh, everybody's already up for two hours before I'm up. But anyways, I get up in the morning every every morning at like seven and then we're doing stuff probably about till I want to say we leave the facility on a on an early day at like 530 at the late at the earliest. So it's definitely it's definitely tough. We do meetings. We probably do like four or five hours of meetings a day. And then we have um like our time for practice like we do a walkthrough before our practices so it's definitely like um it's definitely fast paced and um you're doing a lot of stuff and expect it to perform at a high standard every day so i mean it's definitely taught me like a lot of good lessons and just to bring my a game every day so um, i'm just grateful for the opportunity where i'm at right now so and kid making that transition from sdsu had that COVID year with 2020 and then going straight into putting your name in the draft and then signing with the Seahawks. What was that whole process like for people that don't know? Uh, I mean, it was a long process because I was finishing school in Omaha. Like I was living with my mom and then I was in the transfer portal. So I was trying to figure out if I wanted to pursue my last year eligibility at another school if I wanted to go back to South Dakota State or if I wanted to declare for the draft. So it was definitely like, it was really tough. And I did a lot of prayer, praying and I just kind of took my time and spent my time with family and kind of asked questions. But when the senior bowl invites you to the game and like, that's just such a hard game to get into in the first place. Like it was really tough for me to say no. And so, uh, you know, I just put my best foot forward and, uh, you know, told God, you know, guide me where you want me to be. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like I'm super happy with my decision and um, I got my degree. So uh, that was like really important for me was just finishing school and making sure that, uh, you know, I didn't take those four, four and a half years just down the drain. And um, I was able to get, you know, my school paid for and all that stuff. So I'm very grateful for South Dakota State and just sticking with it, sticking with me through all the tough times um, and stuff that I didn't want to do. But yeah. Well, the podcast is called From the 402. Cade, you grew up in Bellevue, went to Bell West. What was it like growing up with all of your brothers playing football and just that whole community? Such an athletic community, I will say, Omaha. Like, the amount of athletes that come from the city is insane that you just wouldn't even know. And, again, this is what the podcast is all about. So what was your story growing up in Omaha? Yeah, I mean, I just – First and foremost, I just I love Omaha and just like being away from home makes me realize like how special that place is. And, um, you know, just growing up, uh, obviously, me and my uh, older brother were only 15 months apart. So I was really close with him and just like growing up and watching uh, like Antoine Young, Josh Dotzler, who's now like a mentor of mine, like just growing up in the 402 and watching them play and then you obviously have the central days of just the basketball and then uh, transitioning to football. I mean, I wasn't like huge into football like I was basketball and basketball was really my first love. And um, I'm, I like my family. I'm like the runt of the family. Like my little brother is like six, two and my older brother is six, two and I'm five eleven on a good day. So uh, it's just uh, football, uh, basketball was always my first love. And then when Michael Huffman or, yeah, Coach Huffman, when he transferred over to uh, Bellevue West, he um, he convinced me to go out for football, and it's probably the best decision of my life. And uh, I went out my sophomore year, and then uh, the rest is kind of history from there. But, I mean, it's just amazing, like, just looking at the city now and just seeing all the Division One athletes, and then you got guys that are doing really big things in college. And especially for my high school, I mean, I love, um, you know, looking at, uh, I'm just like, I'm very supportive of them still. And I, I like to keep in contact with all the past and present 
present players that are there now. So, I mean, it's just really special for me. And I feel like it's an awesome time for Omaha. And I feel like we're finally getting over the hump where it's like people realize, okay, there's, we have a lot of good athletes that are in the state and we produce talent. Um, you know, we're just not all, always on a national scale, but once the players are out there, I mean, people see it. So. For sure. I mean, another guy that comes to mind, your teammate now, Noah Fant, graduated in the same year as you, 2016. Did you grow up with him playing youth football as well? Yeah, I mean, we were more on the basketball side too, but there uh-huh. was times where we were together like at camps and stuff like that. But me and Noah have been like really tight since a very young age. So it's just weird now that I'm sitting in meeting rooms in the National Football League and I turn around and Noah's just got this grin on his face because uh that's just like it's just crazy and it's surreal for me is like uh me and Noah have been super close and um we signed to like the same agency or he signed to the agency before and then recommended me and uh it just so happened to work out so uh we definitely like have been close since I've been in the league and he's been helping me and stuff and now just to be on the same team is it almost is like a, a dream come true. So um, I'm just grateful every day just to have somebody there that, you know, knows my family. I know his and just background and everything. So it's amazing. How do you think you guys have fed off each other's success and just learning from one another on the field and off the field? I think it's huge. Um, Noah has just been a professional about everything. I mean, he's, he's the type of guy that I look forward to in advice and then He's also somebody that I can just vent to because he's been in the same situation as me and he's been in the same boat and stuff. And um, Noah has helped my little brother as well. Um, I know it was like they almost like mirrored each other with their uh, college decisions, both having offers to Nebraska and picking Iowa. But um, Noah's just been very supportive of me and my family. And I've been supportive of of him as well. So um, just like having him there and um, we've def- we've been golfing a lot too. And so I don't know if this is ruining our relationship because every time <laughs> we're out there, like I'm beating him and he's, and we're both very competitive. So uh, no, but it's, we're, we're having a great time here and it, it's just amazing to have somebody like that here. I was going to say, he's an Omaha South kid. You're a Bell West. So you had to meet on the gridiron a couple times or the court <laughs> in basketball, football. Who has each other's number? Like who's the top dog okay, in high well, school days? Well, from, from the past, Omaha South, no disrespect, but they're they've been a basketball school, and I yeah. th- I think our <laughs> this is kind of rude of me to say, but I think our senior year we beat Noah and them in football. Like it was either seventy something to seven, and Noah was the lone scorer on Omaha South, or it was I think we were nearing the eighties. Like I'm not. Oh even- wow! <laughs> so it could it could have been a it could have been a basketball school too, but it was yeah. football. But. <laughs> Football wise, I have his number in high school, but basketball, I think we're we're about even. So okay, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get his take on that later. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome though. Well, 2016 was a big year for you, so you graduated high school, but you also rode off into the sunset with a state title. How special was that for you? Because winning a state football title in Nebraska is like the the best, the pinnacle of everything here. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely. Uh, it's different. I mean, you just, you don't get that a lot. And then um, having basketball too. So that was just huge. Cause especially when you go to uh, Bellevue West, I mean, growing up, they were always like just a basketball school and it was cool to see like our dad really wanted us to follow in his footsteps. Um, you know um, he, he has the only retired number still at West. So it was, it was really neat to see, um, uh, to see that happen and just the transformation, like I said, with Huffman coming in and like the whole just like mindset of football at the school, like just completely turned around and just like to be there for it's like rebuilding years and like see it all happen was like just really special for me. And especially coming from like Bellevue West, like I just love that school so much. They did so much for me and like have helped me in my future, like more than I could ever imagine. And I'm still really close with a lot of the teachers there. And um, it's just a great, great, great high school. So you bring up your dad. I mean, that guy has to be the most proud <laughs> father in the entire world. All three of his sons, uh, CJ. So he went to Wyoming, the oldest, and then Keegan, the youngest at Iowa right now. And then obviously you up in Seattle. How big of a factor was dad in the playing careers? Yeah, I think my dad is. 
uh, I mean, he's just, he's amazing. Like he's been the best dad that I could ever ask for. And I think the biggest thing with him is like, he never really pushed, pushed us to like pursue something. He let us just kind of fall in love with it ourselves. And I think that's what is unique about all of us is we all have like different stories with football and, I think he just like he played the perfect role in just like supporting us. And, um, you know, he taught us lessons growing up and uh, he was hard on us. But like at the end of the day, it was like it was literally perfect. And I still like call him and he still like gets on me and gives me advice. And, um, you know, that's just the kind of dad I, I wanted. And he's he's literally plays the perfect role. I just I love him so much. So. And your brothers as well, playing with them in the backyard. I'm sure there were countless pickup games, all of that good stuff. Um, what was the competitiveness like at home? I'm sure it was it got a little out of hand at some times. Yeah, my mom, um, my mom can vouch for that. She, uh, <laughs> there was definitely a lot of times where she would be very mad, and because um, like growing up, me and Keegan are like a five year difference, and um, I used to just beat up on Keegan all the time, and. Uh, it was always like CJ was always bigger than us. So like whenever I got the chance to, I wanted to play Keegan because I could bully him a little bit. And then it just came to a point where I, I came home one day and Keegan is like taller than me now. So, but we, <laughs> we have some amazing stories of just like, we used to like create teams and play like driveway basketball. And then we would, we would do wiffle ball. We do hallway football uh, on and CJ would have to be on his knees and, I there's countless memories of breaking walls and pictures and frames and like, just like it was like a bull in a china shop all the time <laughs> our mom was would get so mad so but it was like that was like is huge and um you can definitely see it from Keegan I think it helped Keegan the most just growing up and you got two older brothers and they're beating up on you all the time it makes it a lot easier when you're finally playing kids your age and it's just right different so not your older brothers beating you up in the backyard anymore <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> well keegan you mentioned him he's at iowa right now what kind of growth have you seen from him because he's really off to a hot start there in iowa yeah i mean he's just uh he he amazes me every day um he's such a professional at what he does and he just like he's so humble and he's he he doesn't he's not out there a lot and he's not boastful and I just like I love how he goes about his business every day is he's like he's a workhorse so like every day like he doesn't take any days off he puts a lot of pressure on himself and um we just have to keep reminding him like he can like you're you're still you know 19 at the end of the day it's okay to make mistakes and stuff like that he's just so hard on himself but I think that just like that kind of talks about Keegan's character and he holds himself to a very high standard. So I'm super proud of him um, and what he's doing. And I'm just expecting a huge year out of him. And, um, you know, I'll obviously be with him every step of the way and watching. So I'm really excited for him. And then for you, second training camp right now with the Seahawks, what's your biggest goals for these moments right now and how much they matter? Yeah. I mean, this is like the most pivotal part of the year for me is just like, putting in good reps every day and, um, you know, putting out my resume that, you know, I can play football at the highest level. And, you know, I had a really good first year, like uh, learning behind like DK and Tyler, obviously. And then obviously having Russ there for his last year in Seattle was, it was really cool. But now I'm kind of just transitioning into the spot where I like want to put myself in the best position to be on the field and play and uh, just earn like stripes in the league and stuff like that. So it's, it's been, um, it's been a good like training camp so far and I'm just looking to keep backpacking off of that and um, you know, kind of just proving myself and my worth and where I belong. So definitely. And you come from SDSU, not a place where a ton of NFL guys come out of when you look at the roster up and down and you talk to other guys and where they came from, how do you compare, you know, where you came from, not, not a power five school or anything like that, but South Dakota state and making your way all the way to the NFL yeah. What what kind of story do you bring with you or chip on your shoulder do you have? Um, I think it's huge because it's like uh, you just like not only do you want to represent South Dakota State, but you want to represent like the FCS as a whole. And uh, there's a lot of good players that come from the FCS. And I have uh, a couple buddies from South Dakota State now that are in the league now. But 
definitely it's definitely different when you go into the locker room and try to explain to people <laughs> where you played college ball at and them thinking it's division two and it's really division one too like mm-hmm. we played division one teams um but it's just like i mean i feel like that's just a perfect uh name to my story and um you know i just like I just take that with me every day and um, South Dakota state has definitely done a lot for me and my family. And I'm just grateful that they gave me a chance. And so I just take that with me every day and just representing being a jackrabbit. And um, you know, that a big part of me is, is glad I didn't play somewhere else because I think South Dakota state, they deserve a lot of the credit for um, just uh, my journey in football and just where I'm at now. So I'm just grateful. And, uh, it's definitely different. Like you got Ohio State, Alabama, all these guys, but I mean South Dakota State. I mean, who who wouldn't want to be a so. <laughs> right? Right. Summit League represent. <laughs> exactly. So when you go to training camp right now, what is your mentality every single day going into that, hoping to you know obviously get a spot on the roster, get those reps in with the teams, um, and then also you know still wanting to solidify your spot and just proving yourself every day. What is it like going through that grind? Yeah, I kind of like, I kind of, it's kind of weird that I say this, but it's like, it it really feels like a job interview every day. So like you wake up and you just like, got to make sure you get the uh, right amount of sleep and all this stuff. Like you really just like have to be on your P's and Q's every day. Um, You don't know when your, when your opportunities come and you just have to be ready. And I think that, that, um, it's such a huge thing for me and just like it I've always just been like the type to like just put a lot of um, care into my craft and I think that uh, not a lot of people get this opportunity so um, like I said earlier I'm just like grateful and like you know you only get this opportunity once Uh, NFL careers are not the average NFL career is not long at all so like really for me it's like just taking the time and effort and like doing the little things right and um if I need to do something extra, I will. Cause like, I don't know how long I'll, I'll be able to do this for. And so like, I want to be able to live it out for as long as I can. So. I love that analogy that it's a job interview every day. Cause I imagine that is so true. What's the motivation for you behind all of this? Like what gets you up every single morning to do what you do? Yeah. I think for me, it's like just being the underdog is my whole life, like I was really told that I can't do a lot of stuff. And um, like for like a lot of kids like me is like, I'm just a normal kid from Omaha, Nebraska. And people don't realize it's like, I like, I didn't do anything special. Like I, I didn't eat anything different. Like I really just worked hard. And um, you know, when you, when you dream big and you, and you have goals and you set out to achieve those goals and you don't let anybody get in your way, I think, um, that definitely helps and, um, any kid can really do it when he puts his mind to it. And like, uh, the famous quote, what is it? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And so, um, that's just big for me and just like my progression and, um, just that's what I take with me in my everyday life. So. That's so true because I feel like a lot of kids get caught up in the stars and the rankings and how good your huddle is or how good your highlights are on your Instagram or your Twitter what is your message to kids that, you know, might not be that star player right now, but still have the big dreams of going to the NFL? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, stars do not matter because at the end of the day, when you go to college, um, everybody's on scholarship. Everybody's on the same field. Those stars don't help you. Um, You know, they might put you in a better position to play earlier, but at the end of the day, I mean, I went to college and I was a walk-on. So um, I was able to, you know, garner, Uh, all American honors my redshirt freshman year. Like I said, like, it's really just like the hard work. And uh, uh, for the kids that have stars, more props to you. But uh, once you get to college, like the coaches just want to see you work. And it's just like, uh, it's just like that in the NFL, but it's even on a higher scale. So it's, it's, it's just, at the end of the day, it's just work. That's what it is. Uh, So, yeah. Through your college recruiting process, I know you said you walked on to SDSU, but you still had other visits, um, a couple yeah. other offers as well. Was there any sort of reason, like, you looked at Nebraska? Because that's always a story of, like, hey, why didn't all these kids go to Nebraska? What was the story there? Because, obviously, your father 
won two national championships with the Huskers. Was there any like, not the right word, but like animosity there between, you know, Nebraska and none of, none of your brothers went there either. What's, what's the story there? I'm sure you get asked this all the time. Yeah. It was just more of a thing where it's like, so that's the thing is like, my dad is, is still like huge Nebraska. Like he looked like, that's the people think that my dad is just is out to get Nebraska because they didn't. <laughs> but really, what stemmed from it was uh, uh, when Pelini and his staff were there, they never they didn't offer my older brother, and so I like just based off of that point because then Mike Riley came in, but they didn't offer my older brother, so I'm like, they're not gonna recruit me. Like my my older brother has like every state record for receiving yards and. Um, and then when it came for Keegan, it was like, Keegan was just like, uh, he wanted to make the right decision for his future. Like it was nothing against Nebraska. He just like was picking the best school. And I think that's what, uh, is special about what my dad did with each of us is like, we all like were able to pick the school we wanted to go to and what school we felt most comfortable with. And like growing up, like our dream schools were Nebraska, but it was just like, it was really disappointing when my older brother didn't get an offer and like, I'm confident in my abilities and stuff, but I, I like, I know like how like the walk on thing works, like as an in-state kid sometimes at Nebraska. And I wanted to put myself in a better position and um, coach Jackson, um, uh, Dan Jackson, he's from Omaha and he was at South Dakota state uh, when I first went there and, he recruited me really well and I just felt comfortable, but we all have like different stories with um, our recruiting, our recruiting uh, trips and stuff like that. But there's like, there's no bad blood towards Nebraska. It's just, mm -hmm. they just, they didn't offer my brother. So I didn't think I was going to get a scholarship. So, well, it seemed to work out. I think, I think you did just <laughs> <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> exactly. Um, but looking forward, you know, what you want your career to be or how you want to be remembered at from SDSU and Bell West and all of that, just putting Omaha on the map. And like we talked about earlier, just with the incredible athletes that have come from the city and from the state, how do you want to, how do you wear Omaha on your sleeve still? Yeah, I just, um, well, I literally wear Omaha on my sleeve. I have wow. this Nebraska. Test. How about that? <laughs> I didn't even know you had that. <laughs> But uh, I uh, no, I'm just like, like I said, I'm just super grateful for where I came and uh, like everywhere I go, like Omaha, Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, like I will shout it to the top of the world. Like I just love being a rep for uh, my city and state and I'm just super grateful for everything the community's given to me and I'm just trying to give back in the best way I can and um, just every day, like I, I, I will um, go to the grave with me about where I'm from and stuff like that. So it, it definitely is a very special meaning to me and uh, it's molded me as a person. And um, I'm just super grateful for where I came from. Well, let's talk a little bit NFL right now. So Seahawks are coming into a transition period. Obviously, Russell Wilson had his final year um, with the Seahawks, moved on to Denver. But your buddy Noah Fan did come over through that trade. So that's pretty awesome. Um, what's the vibe right now? at camp with the Seahawks? Uh, the vibe is just, uh, well, obviously we're trying to identify a starting quarterback and um, Gino and Drew are doing a great job of that. But I think um, really like there's a great vibe going around. It's just like guys are, are free and everyone's earning spots and there's a lot of transition. So um, uh, we're definitely like a younger, faster team. So it's definitely been like really interesting or really cool to see like the transitions um, with the team last year and this year. And uh, I mean, the spirits are just really high and coach Carroll does a great job of rallying all of us and having us um, be uh, just where our feet are and um, going about our business and doing it with enthusiasm. So um, I'm definitely been spoiled to, you know, be on a really good NFL team, like to start my journey and, um, I'm just grateful. So, what's it like being coached by Pete Carroll, one of the one of the legends of the game? Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, just talking to him every day is like you don't realize like his his resume and that he has, and like it's it, it's kind of weird now because like uh, I'm walking by him now and I see him every day, so I like think it's normal, but it's like to the average eye, it probably wouldn't be that normal just to like have a conversation with Pete every day, but. It's really cool, and he's a, he's a great coach, and 
great mentor and he definitely uh still with how how however many years he's been doing it for he's still just as enthusiastic tomorrow as he was yesterday so it's i mean it's it's amazing like just to be able to sit there and get that coaching from him and stuff like that so and the veteran guys too and some of the stars of the league and dk metcalf and then lockett as well what's it like learning from those guys just the pros of the pros yeah it's it's yeah it's amazing i mean i love my wide receiver group and the guys that are in it and just being able to uh form this relationship just this past year and we've all gotten super close and tyler's one of those guys too that me and Noah have been golfing with and <laughs> he's he's getting very uh competitive as well with that and um you know the bigger thing is like you see these guys as football players but they're even better human beings so um just being able to have that personal relationship with all of them and being able to you know just kind of pick their minds and listen to what they have to say and all that it's it's really like an awesome feeling to have so well, Cade, thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate the time. I'm glad you literally wear Omaha on your sleeve. You're a great <laughs> representative for the state. That's funny. When did you get that tattoo? Oh, I've had it for I think three or four years now. What but... is it exactly? What's on the what's okay, on the sleeve? Okay, so it's like I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so it's like the state of Nebraska. Okay. And I have like a I have like a dot right where Omaha is. So oh, okay. So it's like right there. So, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> for, but yeah. All right, Cade. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck to you in training camp. Really appreciate your time. And again, uh, thanks for being a great rep for Omaha. We'll, we'll look forward to the rest of your career. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. Appreciate it.